Hey y'all, how y'all doing? I am here with an update in the case of Maurice Scott Sr. versus Miss Black Titanic, okay? AKA Helen Griffin. So we're gonna get into it because um the own network has finally responded and you won't believe what they are saying, okay? So um First off, they've gotten them some representation and they have filed a motion to dismiss. But that's nothing to worry about. That's just standard. That's what folks do in the beginning of a lawsuit, okay? So um, I just wanted to bring this update to y'all. So I'm just going to get right into it. I'm not going to include too many of my opinions, okay? I'll do that maybe in a second video. But um, just in case I throw something out there that is not on the court doc that I'm about to read, just know that my opinions are just that, my opinions, okay, um, and alleged, okay? So let's get into it. In the court, in the circuit court of Madison County, Alabama, Maurice Shea Scott Sr., plaintiff versus Black Titanic, aka BT, aka Helen Clark, aka Helen Griffin, third-party defendant, Oprah Winfrey Network, LLC motion to dismiss Helen Griffin's cross claim pursuant to Alabama rule of civil procedure 12B6 third party defendant Open Winfrey Network LLC own moves to dismiss Helen Griffin's cross claim against own in Griffin's amended answer to plaintiff Maurice J. Scott Sr.'s amended complaint affirmative defenses counterclaimed against Maurice J. Scott Sr. and cross claim against Open Winfrey Network own. Doc 106, cross-claim, for failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Griffin's cross-claim is due to be dismissed in its entirety for two reasons. First, Griffin failed to plead facts supporting any claim entitling her to relief under the theory that Own is vicariously liable for Scott's conduct or has respondeat superior liability because she failed to plead that Mr. Scott is an employee or agent of own or that his alleged misconduct occurred in the scope of that relationship. Second, Griffin failed to plead facts supporting any claim entitling her to relief under the theory that own is individually liable because she failed to allege facts demonstrating that own individually engaged in any actionable misconduct. Background. The cross claim arises from an action originally filed by the plaintiff and counterclaim. Defendant Maurice J. Scott Sr. against defendant and counterclaim plaintiff Helen Griffin for defamation, libel, and slander. Griffin's present cross claim against own is based on allegations against Scott for misconduct in the way he determined Griffin's identity for the purposes of substituting her for a fictitious party. Griffin alleges only the following facts against own. Scott is a cast member of an unscripted program show entitled Love and Marriage Huntsville. The show airs on own and is about the lives of select African-American couples. Griffin is a viewer of the show. In addition to these facts, Griffin does include conjecture that Scott is likely, <coughs> excuse me, Scott is likely using this lawsuit as a new theme for his show for advertisement for profit and a way to appear dominant and and in control over his television and internet audience she asserts no facts suggesting that scott has actually used this litigation in his show that own has aired any element of this litigation or that own was even aware of much less authorized scott to pursue litigation as a theme for this show so i'm gonna stop right there and you know because I have a few things that I want to say regarding that. First of all, in my opinion, that is very much so what Maurice planned to do. Use this as a storyline. In his video where he threatened the content creator with a lawsuit, he said out of his own mouth that he talked to Carlos King about suing. Okay? He said that Carlos King told him to give them a chance to take it down. Why don't he give them a chance to take it down? Maurice then asked them to all give him a public apology. Okay. And in my opinion, Maurice wanted them to, one of the content creators to give him a person, uh, um, a public apology because he wanted to use that for a storyline. He himself. Okay. Also said that this show is pretty much fake. 
He said that we needed to separate reality from reality TV, okay? And he's not the only one that suggested that the show was fake. Martel Holt himself, a main cast member of the show, also said that the show was fake. He said that they are actors, okay? So it's not unbelievable that Maurice would use this as a storyline. And the only reason that he hasn't used this as a storyline, in my opinion, is because his ass fucked up. It backfired. His plan backfired on him. He never thought that the content creators would be smart enough to figure out what the fuck he had done. He wasn't anticipating them getting lawyers. You understand what I'm saying? And bringing his ass into court. You understand what I'm saying? So, of course, he's not going to put this shit on the show. Because it backfired on his ass. He has allegedly committed crimes against these content creators. So, no. That's the only reason it hasn't made it to the show. In my opinion. Okay? And as far as this other shit, it's it seems to me that on is denying that Maurice is an employee of theirs. Is Maurice not on Love and Marriage Huntsville? Is Love and Marriage Huntsville not on the own network? Make it make sense. But hey, when you're trying to get dismissed from a lawsuit, I guess this is the shit that you would do. Y'all blacking out and all. See, some folks wanted to say something about me trying to get the folks to black out on okay how could you not how could you not but i'll talk about that in another video i just want to stay focused on this court document okay so let me get back to where i was griffin also asserts the legal conclusion that scott is deemed an agent, <clears throat> employee, and or extension of the unscripted program, Love and Marriage Huntsville. However, she does not allege any facts supporting this conclusion. Importantly, she does not contend or assert that Scott is an employee or agent of own or that his misconduct was committed in the scope of such relationship. Griffin also did not plead a single fact that own individually committed any uh, what is that? Torturous or unlawful, unlawful act causing harm to Griffin. In considering a rule 12B motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. So this is the standard of review, y'all, that I'm reading. Okay. So it said in considering a rule 12B motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. The appropriate standard is whether when the allegations of the complaint are viewed mo most strongly in the pleader's favor, it appears that the pleader could prove any set of circumstances that would entitle her to relief. Such a motion is proper only when it appears beyond doubt that the plaintiff can prove no set of facts in support of the claim that would entitle the plaintiff to relief. In considering whether a complaint is sufficient to withstand a motion to dismiss the court must take the allegations of the complaint as true and construe all doubts regarding the sufficiency of the complaint in favor of the plaintiff however to survive the defendant's motion to dismiss the plaintiff was required to plead facts that would support those conclusory allegations a motion to dismiss under rule 12b should be granted when it, when it appears beyond doubt that the plaintiff can prove no set of facts in support of the claim that would entitle the plaintiff to relief. Argument number one, Griffin has failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted against own for a respondeat superior or vicarious liability because she failed to allege any facts demonstrating that Maurice Scott is an agent or employee of own or two, that any misconduct of Scott occurred in the scope of that relationship. It is beyond doubt that Griffin can prove no set of facts based on those asserted within the four corners of her cross claim in support of a theory of vicarious liability that would entitle her to relief against own for any of the alleged misconduct of Scott. This is because a general rule, an employer 
or principal incurs vicarious liability to third parties only for the acts of an employee that are performed within the scope of the employment as for the acts of an agent that are performed within the scope of an agency. Griffin has failed to plead an employment or agency relationship between Scott and Own or that Scott's misconduct took place within the scope of the employment or agency relationship. In the context of an employment relationship, the common law doctrine of respondeat superior governs vicarious liability. To recover against a defendant under the theory of a respondeat superior, it is necessary for the plaintiff to establish the status of employer and employee, master and servant. Furthermore, the law in Alabama is well settled that an employer is not liable for the international facts I'm sorry, the international acts of its employee, unless the acts were committed within the scope of the employee's employment or were done to further the interests of the employer. An employer is not liable under the doctrine of respondeat superior when the employee acts for his or her own personal gain and not in furtherance of the employer's business. The doctor, I'm sorry, the doctrine of respondeat superior does not hold employers liable for acts impelled by an employee's motives that had nothing to do with the employee's duties to his employer. Hold on, you guys. I'm just trying to follow. Okay, that is true even if the employee's independent pursuance happened to confer an unintended or incidental benefit of his employer. Here, Griffin has two burdens. First, she must plead facts sufficient to show a status of employer and employee between Scott and Ohm. Second, she must allege that Scott's actions were done within the scope of the employee's employment. In her cross-claim, the only facts connecting Scott and Own are as follows. Maurice Scott, plaintiff and now counter-defendant, has repeatedly named, represented, referred to, or is deemed an agent, employee, and or extension of Oprah Winfrey Network's reality show, Love and Marriage Huntsville, to the extent that Oprah Winfrey Network is hereby and properly added as an inseparable and or liable party to this action pursuant to rule 19 and 20. Mr. Scott appears before television and or internet viewers by way of the Oprah Winfrey Network also called on. Mr. Scott who calls himself a celebrity from the Oprah Winfrey Network show Love and Mary Tonsfield is particularly fixated with one of the three female African American viewers by the name of Helen Griffin. The Oprah Winfrey Network is responsible for and in control of airing the show and bringing the show to the viewing audience on television and even on the internet. Based upon conduct by Maurice J. Scott Sr., Maurice Scott, and the adoption, ratification, control over Maurice Scott, the airway provided by Oprah Winfrey Network LLC on bringing content to its viewing audience. All that Griffin has alleged is that one, Scott is an agent, employee, and or extension of an unscripted program, Love and Marriage Huntsville. Two, Mr. Scott appears on the show. And three, own airs the show. What she has plainly failed to plead is that Mr. Scott is an employee or agent of own. The sole connection that Griffin can make between own and Maurice Scott is that he appears on a television show, Love and Marriage Huntsville, which airs on own. She simply alleges that own is a conduit for Scott's television and internet appearances. Absent from Griffin's cross-claim is a single factual allegation establishing Scott as an employee or agent of own. Even if Griffin had pled facts showing an employment relationship between Scott and own, there's not a single allegation in Griffin's cross-claim that Scott was acting in the scope of such employment when he brought, identified, and began prosecuting his fictitious party lawsuit against Griffin. The same is true for a principal-agent relationship. She alleges no facts that Scott was acting on Owen's behalf when his alleged misconduct took place or was otherwise acting within the scope of an agency relationship. There are no facts alleging that any misconduct by Scott was committed in the line and scope of an employment or agency relationship with Owen or that they were committed in furtherance of Ohm's 
business interests. Apart from the ball and conclusory assertion, excuse me, y'all, that she was harmed by the adoption ratification control over Maurice Scott, the airway provided by Open Winfrey Network LLC own, bringing content to its viewing audience. Griffin failed to plead that Scott's alleged misconduct was committed in the scope of an employment or agency relationship with OWN or was undertaken in furtherance of the business of OWN as required to hold an employer or principal vicariously liable for the acts of an employee or agent in Alabama. The extent of her allegations is that Love and Marriage Huntsville airs on OWN and that Scott appears on the show Griffin did not plead facts alleging that own film Scott's alleged misconduct towards Griffin. She also did not plead facts alleging that own aired any such footage. Griffin also did not plead facts alleging that own knew or ratified Scott's alleged Scott's alleged misconduct. She further did not plead facts that Scott instituted his defamation action for the benefit and under the di- under the direction of own. Scott's civil complaint against Griffin and his actions taken to identify and serve her with his complaint is in pursuit of his individual rights and remedies under the law, entirely separate from the network on which an unscripted program he appears upon airs. Nothing in Griffin's cross-claim establishes otherwise. The claim against own are due to be dismissed because Griffin has failed to plead a set of facts in support of claims that would entitle her to relief against own. Miss Black Titanic lawyer is gonna eat them the fuck up. Okay? The nerve. This is just crazy. But let me continue. Two. Griffin has failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted against OWN because she has failed to allege any facts demonstrating that OWN individually committed any of the torts alleged in her cross-claim. In each of her 21 counts against Scott and OWN, Griffin asserts the parties are individually, jointly, and severally liable taking the allegations as true and viewing them most strongly. In the pleader's favor, there's not a single fact asserted that own individually engaged in any of the tortures or otherwise wrongful or illegal conduct. Let me just redo that last, those last two sentences because I fucked that word up, okay? So... It said in each of her 21 counts against Scott and own Griffin asserts the parties are individually jointly and severally liable. Okay. Taking the allegations as true and viewing them most strongly in the pleader's favor. Okay. And then they said there is not a single fact asserted that own individually engaged in any of the tortious or otherwise wrongful or illegal conduct. The extent of the factual allegations asserted by Griffin establishes that one own airs an unscripted program, Love and Marriage Huntsville. Two, Scott appears on the show aired by own. And three, Griffin, among others, watched the show. These three elementary facts, oh no, the fuck they didn't. Okay, these three elementary facts paired with the blanket statement included with each count that the adoption, ratification, control over Maurice Scott, the airway provided by Oprah Winfrey Network LLC own, bringing content to its viewing audience are patently insufficient to state a claim against own individually upon which relief can be granted. Apart from the three facts above, Griffin does not state any other specific facts regarding own. The facts, the facts she has provided in no way create or support a claim that would entitle her to relief against own under Alabama law. Specifically, Grant, I'm sorry, specifically Griffin pled no facts that own invaded her privacy in any manner. Bitches, please.
that lawyer has all the fucking facts. Like, I'm so disgusted. I am so disgusted. But hey, this is what they have to do, I guess. To try to get this dismissed, but it ain't going to work. Okay. Let me continue. And then just the fact that they tried to insult her. Ain't shit elementary about Miss Black Titanic's lawyer. And they're going to soon find it out. That lady is fucking brilliant. Okay. She saw what Maurice did automatically and called that shit out automatically. And the judge is going to see it too. Okay. The nerve. But let me continue. Apart from the three facts above, Griffin does not state any other specific facts regarding own. The facts that she has provided in no way create or support a claim that would entitle her to relief against own under the Alabama law. <laughs> Give me a second, y'all. Give me a second. I'm just going back over this. Specifically, Griffin pled no facts that own invaded her privacy in any manner. This is the part that gives me. How the fuck can they say that he didn't invade these, well, I'm going to keep it on Miss Black Titanic. How the fuck can they say that he didn't invade her privacy when this motherfucker subpoenaed her banking information, all of her names, her addresses? You get what I'm saying? You see the bullshit that they own? This is disgusting. But I'm not worried at all. Because when it comes to the lawyers, I know that Miss Black Titanic got one of the best, Okay. So let me just continue. But that shit just threw me off for a second. She pled no facts that own engaged in outrageous conduct as required to support a claim for intentional infliction of emotion, distress, or outage. She pled no facts that own destroyed or exercised dominion over her property. She did not plead any facts with... Uh, she What is that? She did not plead any facts regarding fraudulent conduct by own bitches is fraudulent to re subpoena to request subpoenas what is that just six days after you file a fucking lawsuit whatever the fuck it was like he knew damn well he did not serve any of those defendants he knew that and y'all he admitted to the shit in court he admitted to this shit like there is no defending this no matter what they say, no matter what they do. This is disgusting. And this is my first time reading this. I didn't read this before I brought it to y'all. So give me a second. Griffin also pled no facts that own hired Scott or is in an employment relationship with Scott as required to support a claim for negligent hiring. <laughs> she pled no facts supporting claims that own individually suppressed material facts engaged in wantonness, violate, violated the Stored Communications Act, violated the First and Fourth Amendments of the United States Constitution, violated Section 1 of the Alabama Constitution, or engaged in conducting or engaged in conduct requiring a restraining order. Because Griffin has failed to plead a set of facts in support of a single claim against own that would entitle her to relief against own individually, Griffin's twenty one claims are due to be dismissed are due to be dismissed in your fucking dreams. Okay? In your dreams. Three, Griffin has failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted against own because facts constituting each element of her 
Each element of her various causes of action cannot be found by even the most liberal, liberal reading of her cross claim. For Griffin's claim against own, the law is well settled that a defendant cannot be held vicariously liable for a tort when the plaintiff cannot establish underlying liability for that tort. And then she cited something, um, Stovall versus Hancock, dismissing plaintiff's respondent superior claim against defendant when the underlying tort claim, intentional infliction of emotional distress was not plausibly pled such that it could survive a motion to dismiss under Alabama law. A, invasion of privacy. First, Griffin asserts a variety of invasion of privacy claims in Alabama invasion of privacy convinced of four. Let me read that over. First, Griffin asserts a variety of invasion of privacy claims. In Alabama, invasion of privacy consists of four limited and distinct wrongs. One, intruding into the plaintiff's physical solitude or seclusion. Two, giving publicity to private information about the plaintiff that violates ordinary decency. Three, putting the plaintiff in a false but not necessarily defamatory position in the public eye. Four, appropriating some element of the plaintiff's personality for a commercial use. And although all of the claim concern, all of the claims concern in the abstract, the concept of being left alone, each tort has distinct elements and establishes a separate interest that may be invaded. <sighs> In order to state an invasion of privacy claim, a plaintiff must clearly state what information defendants allegedly accessed that invaded her privacy, and more broadly, what type of invasion of privacy claims she wishes to pursue. Granting defendants motion to dismiss plaintiff's privacy claim applying Alabama law when plaintiff did not identify the type of invasion of privacy claim she wished to pursue. Here Griffin's cross claim is based on naked assertions of facts, naked assertions of fact that Scott has wrongfully attempted to access personal and private data and information. She further states that Mr. Scott used apparently deceptive methods described herein to seek and or obtain Miss Griffin's personal identifier information, her PayPal data, her name, address, and date of birth, phone number, email addresses, and all bank accounts and other described information. And did he even admit it to the motherfucking shit? Okay. He said that he had to do it because he could not find them. Did he not say that? Let me calm down. Griffin speculates that Scott is also aware that within such data are likely to be privileged information to and from Helen Griffin's attorneys, doctors regarding minor children and other data protected against disclosure. Scott was apparently seeking to obtain Griffin's most private and privileged data, bank information and identity data. Yet she fails to please Scott has in fact wrongfully access and did obtain privilege and private and privileged data. Griffin's pleadings merely contain allegations that Scott used methods to seek and or obtain and is potentially holding private information. Griffin also has failed to state what type of invasion of privacy claim she wishes to pursue by only repeating the four limited and distinct wrongs the tort of invasion of privacy may address and vaguely stating that Scott sought certain information which he potentially may hold now. Griffin has failed to adequately state a claim that would entitle her to relief. Griffin also asserted an invasion of privacy through cyber stalking claim, but failed to cite any Alabama or federal law creating such cause of action. Accordingly, Griffin has failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted for invasion of privacy, and these claims are due to be dismissed. B. 
tort of outrage. Second, under Alabama law, the tort of outrage is the same cause of action as intentional infliction of emotional distress. The tort of outrage requires that, one, the actor intended to inflict emotional distress or knew or should have known that emotional distress was likely to result from his conduct. Two, the conduct was extreme and outrageous. Three, the defendant's actions caused the plaintiff distress. And four, the distress was severe. With respect to the conduct element, the court has stated that the conduct must be so outrageous in character and so extreme in degree as to go beyond all possible bounds of decency and to be regarded as atrocious and utterly intolerable in a civilized society. The Supreme Court of Alabama has characterized the tort of outrage as an extreme, <clears throat> excuse me, as an extremely limited cause of action where recovery is available for a few kinds of conduct. The court has recognized it in regard to limited kinds of conduct, including one, wrongful conduct in the family burial context, two, barbaric methods employed to coerce an insurance settlement, and three, egregious um, actual har sexual harassment. Um, let's see. And then their lawyers cited uh, something, Potts versus Hayes. Alabama 2000, internal citations omitted, okay? She said another example of conduct, so outrageous in character and so extreme in degree as to go beyond all possible bounds of decency such that Alabama law relief includes a family physician exchanging addictive prescription drugs for intimacy from a teenage patient resulting in a teenager's addiction. Okay, that was a citation that um, owns lawyer put in there okay let me continue here in stating her claim under um okay here in stating her claim griffin must not only provide a short and plain statement of her claim she must also show that she is entitled to relief on that claim even if all allegations Griffin cited in support of her tort of outrage and intentional infliction of emotional distress claims are true, the facts are insufficient to rise to the outrageous level necessary to support such claims. These facts do not rise to the level at which Alabama courts have allowed recovery for the tort of outrage. <laughs> Cases involving misconduct in a burial, sexual harassment, or assault, or barbaric methods of coercing an insurance settlement. Thomas, 21, that's another citation, affirming the trial's court's dismissal of the plaintiff's outrage claim when the defendant's conduct in a, improperly causing the plaintiff termination and subjecting the plaintiff to severe emotional distress did not rise to the level of conduct where relief could be granted. Let me continue. Griffin has alleged that Scott wrongfully brought, identified, and is prosecuting a fictitious party lawsuit against Griffin. That conduct is not so extreme and outrageous such that it has caused emotional distress so severe that no reasonable person could be expected to endure it. Griffin has not pled facts sufficient to establish a plausible claim for intentional infliction of emotional distress or outrage, and these claims are due to be dismissed. Conclusion. For these reasons, own respectfully request that the court dismiss Helen Griffin's cross claim in its entirety with prejudice. And that was that, y'all. That was the um complete document. I'm going to put my opinions about this in a different video okay i think that's what's best but i just want to bring you all the update that i have okay i will keep y'all posted on that note y'all take care and i will chat with y'all in the next one